Welcome back everyone for another video. I have had a lot of requests to keep covering the Nintendo Switch 2 and I made my videos up until this point on all the information I could get as accurately as possible from the best sources as possible to fulfill those requests but I didn't want to keep beating a dead horse and make repeat content so I went dormant on the Switch 2 for a while waiting for more information before covering it again and we actually have received new information from a couple of sources one being Digital Foundry and some unique information from Geeker one that helps us get a little more specific with the specs and performance expectations of the Switch 2. So I want to highlight these details and touch back on my opinions of the Switch 2 hardware capabilities now that we have them. But before we begin, if you're new here, consider subscribing to catch my weekly uploads. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash the like button. Enough of all that. Let's just get right into it. This is going to be a shorter video today. So again, Digital Foundry yesterday came out with what they say are confirmed specifications and utilizations for the Switch 2 hardware. We also have some information as well as simulated hardware benchmarks from GeekerWan, all together providing new insight on the three pieces of hardware that I focused on on this channel, within the Switch 2 being its CPU, GPU, and the RAM. Now for starters, it is confirmed that the Switch 2 CPU does indeed have eight ARM Cortex-A78 C cores. The clock frequencies were also correct, with it being clocked at 1.1 GHz in portable mode and just under 1 GHz when docked. Simulated Geekbench scores also show that the CPU performance of the Switch 2 is about 60 times that of the Switch 1, even at similar clock speeds, and about three times faster than the Jaguar CPU cores found in the last generation's Xbox One and PS4. Even though the Switch 2 CPU runs 600 to 750 megahertz slower than they do, a true testament to how IPC or instructions per clock improvements have been made over the last few generations. One thing I want to throw in here as a disclaimer though is that this specific test where I'm getting this information was done using eight ARM Cortex A78 AE cores, and we also found out that two of the eight cores in the Switch 2 CPU are reserved for the operating system, while six cores are usable for games. So actual performance metrics are going to certainly vary there, as obviously the A78 AE is not the exact same A78 C, nor were any of the eight cores in that test disabled to simulate six usable cores, but it definitely does provide some much needed insight into the CPU capability potential of the Switch 2, even at its limited clock speeds. The GPU is also been confirmed to have the same 1536 CUDA cores as early information revealed with the same clock speeds as well. The Switch 2 GPU also does indeed have the capability of ray tracing and DLSS. DLSS in my eyes being a huge deal that will help improve image quality from the inevitable low resolutions that we're going to be getting from advanced third party titles. With Virtual Fighter 6 being a prime example here at launch, rendering at a native 540p resolution but then using DLSS to hit 1080p as a output target and yet still having a sharper image than the Xbox Series S version, which runs the same game at a native 1080p. Of course, there's some graphical features missing on the Switch 2 version, but this is still pretty impressive, all things considered, and backs up why I think DLSS is going to be huge on the Switch 2, even though it's limited in power to other consoles that exist out there, while also remembering how much of a jump it is compared to its predecessor. I'm also super curious to what Nintendo First Party Studios were going to be able to do with the ray tracing on the Switch 2, even if that ray tracing itself is limited because we all know Nintendo first party developers know how to squeeze every ounce of juice out of Nintendo consoles. The RAM configuration is also the same as we discussed in my last video covering that topic more extensively where we already were confident but now are certain that the Switch 2 has 12 gigabytes of 128-bit LPDDR5X RAM running at 2133 megahertz in handheld mode providing 68 gigabytes a second of memory bandwidth and 3200 megahertz in docked mode providing 102 gigabytes of memory bandwidth. Of this 12 gigabytes of RAM, we now know that 9 gigabytes is usable for games with 3 gigabytes reserved for the operating system. So, so far, this is pretty fantastic because we got a lot of confirmations on things that we already knew but weren't entirely sure of before, and now we have more clarity on a few details. One being that two CPU cores are reserved for the operating system, three gigabytes of RAM are also reserved for the operating system. We have confirmation of the core count in the CPU, CUDA core count in the GPU, and how much RAM the Switch 2 has, as well as how fast these different components are going to operate. Overall, I'm still very impressed with the Switch 2, and when you compare it to its predecessor, we are still getting a monumental upgrade here. We're doubling the total CPU count from 4 to 8, 
or in terms of what actually be used by games, three to six, delivering as much as six times the performance with those extra cores, as well as the improvements in architecture between the CPUs, even at similar clock speeds, and is a huge deal to have any chance of running more modern, heavy third-party titles on the console, even with major graphics concessions to do so, and of course opens up a ton of new creative possibilities for Nintendo first-party games that weren't at all possible on the Switch 1. The new Donkey Kong game being a good example here with its destruction and morphable, if you will, environment. We're also getting over three to four times the memory bandwidth depending on mode being used and three times the RAM capacity as well. The GPU is also a massive improvement with Nvidia themselves claiming a 10x jump in graphics capability over the Switch 1, but it's not clear if this includes performance gained when using DLSS or not. But either way, we know we're getting six times the CUDA core count while running at a 20 to 25% higher clock speed, again, depending on mode, as well as this GPU being based off a way more advanced amp year slash Ada Lovelace hybrid custom architecture. This focus on improvements between its predecessor alone is why I'm generating so much personal excitement and hype for this console, and it's the reason why I own a Switch anyway. I own it to play Nintendo games. I would say that's the same reason why a lot of people have a Nintendo Switch as well, is to play Nintendo games. I feel like a lot of people are way too hooked up on comparing it to PlayStation 5 and Series X, and I think shouldn't be the top priority. I mean, when you're comparing it to other consoles, it's important to remember that the Switch 2 is just never designed to beat consoles like the premium home consoles from Sony or Microsoft in pure horsepower, and it's certainly never going to touch their pure graphical output either. But the Switch 2 is certainly a capable hybrid handheld home console that gives people a lot of choices on how they want to play and gives you access to Nintendo first party games as well. Now that said, there's definitely something I am concerned with with all this current information that we have now. First is the operating system resource allocation. As far as percentages go, the Switch 2 is technically no different from the Switch 1 with the operating system resources. Basically, 25% of the Switch 1 CPU cores and RAM were reserved for the operating system, one of its four CPU cores and one of its four gigabytes of RAM. The Switch 2 is following suit with 25% across the board as well, two of its eight CPU cores and three of its 12 gigabytes of RAM reserved for the OS. Now I'm not going to lie, I was definitely expecting a much lighter OS considering the operating system is very similar to the Switch 1, so I figured maybe two gigabytes of RAM at the most as well as maybe one CPU core being reserved in my initial speculation. And my thought process on this is pretty sane, in my opinion, with current gen consoles like the Xbox Series consoles and PlayStation 5 using one core for their operating systems, and so did their predecessors. And so I assume both cores having heavier operating systems, at least in my mind, with more background capability than the Switch 2 operating system, I figured that's just what we would see. I suppose with the new chat and video features that it may be necessary, but I personally would have foregone all of that to maximize my already limited performance when compared to other consoles just to zap as much performance out of mine as possible while still achieving the whole Nintendo vision, and I'm saying that with air quotes, but hey, that's just me. I guess it is possible this could improve in the future. I mean, later updates on the Switch 1 did increase the RAM available for games from 3 gigabytes flat to 3.2 gigabytes, which isn't a crazy change, but every megabyte does count. And other consoles have done other similar things in the past. Think Microsoft removing additional resource reservations for Kinect. Matter of fact, I'm actually getting kind of connecty vibes with the whole discord like video and chat features and it forcing more hardware than I thought was necessary to have it at all so I'm hopeful that either a I'm overthinking it and the switch 2 just goes on to impress a lot of people myself included with what it has and it becomes something that we don't really discuss all that much in the future or b it is an area that can be approved upon and it gets improved in the future with future updates but we'll have to see time will tell on that one I'm still happy that even with six CPU cores and nine out of 12 gigabytes of usable RAM we still got games on the switch to at or near launch that a lot of people expected wouldn't be on the console at all, like Cyberpunk 2077. But that's all I have for you in today's video. Just a quick update as well as a refresh of my thoughts with everything. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you all in my next one over the weekend. Until then, I hope you have a good morning, afternoon, or evening. Peace.